Good morning, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Got to get everything all situated here this morning. As you can see, I am flying solo today. Brooke is not feeling well this morning. So, I am here by myself. Don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. It's, um, it's odd doing a live by yourself. It just seems odd. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I hope you guys are doing wonderful this morning. Y'all, we have had some amazing weather this week. It has been like mid-60s all week. Gorgeous. Another gorgeous day today. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weather here on the farm. Oh, I do have a co-host. Sorry. Come here. Come on. Come on. It's, uh, she's right here. <laughs> I got Holly helping me this morning. She um she's gonna keep me straight. <laughs> but just beautiful weather here, just sunshine, and it has been gorgeous. Brooke actually helped me do some things yesterday on the tractor. She was on the tractor yesterday. Not feeling well this morning. Uh actually, we don't even think this is even autoimmune related. We think that um she's got just some crud. She um she woke up this morning. She's got a cough. She, uh, she's got a fever and um, just doesn't feel well. So we don't think it has anything to do with her autoimmune this morning. So she's not up to it. I fixed her some coffee and she's laying down. So um, don't know. I <laughs> just don't know, y'all. It's been crazy, crazy. She did go to the doctor. I think I mentioned it in one of my videos this week. Um, they ran some more tests on her, checked all her vitamin levels, thyroid, checked for Lyme disease again. Um, just all kinds of all kinds of more tests on her. This was at her just general physician. This isn't her um no, no specialist yet. But um uh, the thing that came back was is her platelets were higher than they have been. So her doctor is getting her set up with a hematologist, not a rheumatologist. We're still waiting on rheumatology. And she's still having that issue with her mouth that she talks about to you guys from time to time. It's not thrush. Uh, they're not quite for sure what it is. So they got her set up to go see a, um, a ENT, a ear, nose and throat doctor. So, and they assured us those appointments will come in pretty quick. It won't be like the rheumatology. They, they just said rheumatologists are backed up. Uh, the hematologist and uh, the ears, nose, and throat doctor, they're, um, they, are, they are not backed up. So, I don't know all the ins and outs of the blood work, but everything was pretty much okay except the... Um, the uh the platelets that was the main thing that her doctor didn't like and told her that ahead of time that if her plate if something was off then she was going to see if she could get her in with a, a blood doctor so that's what it is and um but today i don't think it has anything to do with any of that I, I think i actually think just her immune system's down and she's just called a crud she just has um either going to the to her doctors this week that's that's where I'm thinking she probably picked it up, just my opinion, but I don't know. Anyways, <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful weather here. Like I said, me and Brooke worked outside yesterday. I've been working outside all the time, but she helped me a lot yesterday. And that will be some of Monday's video. We do have some rain coming in tomorrow. Uh, they're saying over an inch of rain. I'm hoping that my grass seed doesn't wash away. I got most of the hay put out. Uh, but I am a little worried about the, the grass seed washing away. But hopefully not. Hopefully not. It's rye grass. It's not super expensive, thank goodness. And um, we do got a couple more bags of it. If it does, then I'll just try to put some more out. But it's been perfect weather 
for the ryegrass. I just keep waiting to see some green to sprout up because it has just been beautiful weather outside. And ryegrass only needs about 50 degrees. The soil needs to be around 50 degrees to about 70-ish for it to um for it to germinate. So uh hopefully, hopefully it doesn't wash. Hope the hay works. Just hope the hay works and it doesn't wash away or we don't get torrential rains. Um but they are saying like an inch, inch and a half. So that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Uh, a few things is that we will be launching our new coffee this week. Um, I don't know what day it's going to come out. Just depends on when uh, Miss Jacqueline gets it all set up on the website. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys what it is. It is Southern Pecan. So Southern Pecan Coffee will be out at some point this week. Uh, I'm hoping maybe tomorrow, but if not, not tomorrow, Monday. I get my days mixed up. I don't have a book here. I didn't even say what day it was. February the 3rd, uh, Saturday, February the 3rd, 2024. So <laughs> that's the, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm lost. But uh, hopefully this week we will have the Southern Pecan out. And we're also, our beekeepers are working on uh, a little something that some of you guys have been asking for with our honey. And they haven't got it all worked out yet because they had to buy uh, uh, some equipment for this. But almost, and maybe that'll be this month too. But I'll keep you guys posted uh, with uh, the new honey adventure as well. But I am, I am excited about the Southern Pecan. It is, if you never had Southern Pecan coffee and you like pecans, you don't even have to like pecans. It's good. It's good. Um, so that is coming out this month. And this is our plans to do. I don't know if I mentioned this yet or not, but this is our plans to do with the coffee. We're going to come out. We're going we're gonna to do the Southern Pecan this month. And then we're going to do another flavor next month. And uh, two popular flavors that Ryan has suggested that he thinks are very, very popular that people will love. And then we're going to let you guys vote on which one sticks around. It won't be seasonal. You know, like the pumpkin spice is seasonal. The Christmas one is seasonal. Uh, we're going to let you guys vote on which one sticks around. So we're going to need your guys' input on this. And um, this will be going on through what? This will be uh, February and then March and then April. So we'll get you guys input on that. And uh, I think that's going to be fun. I really do. I think that's going to be fun. I got my coffee this morning. Thank goodness. I need it. Whew. So what in the world have you guys been up to? I did. That's right. Big Phil. I tell y'all what. I hope Big Phil. I can't say that. I'm not even going to attempt to say his first name. I'm just not going to attempt to say it. I mean, it's just I'm a wordsmith, but that's on another level right there. But Big Phil, the groundhog. He says we're going to have an early spring, and I hope he ain't playing with us, y'all. He better not be pulling our strings, you know what I'm saying? Because we can find him. All of us can find him. The cog squad can go find Big Phil if he's playing, if he's, you know, if he's pulling our strings or pulling our leg now. Because he says we're going to have that spring, and if it sticks like this right now, y'all, my gracious, we are. It is going to be um, spring real quick. Real quick. But uh, what have you guys been up to? What have y'all been up to? I figure I'll just play it by ear, maybe ask some questions. Uh, and, I mean, answer some questions. Is there a dark roast? We do have a dark roast coffee. We do. Um, we do. I don't think there will be a uh, Pucks a Tony feel. Thanks, Joy. I probably even said that wrong. <laughs> oh, I probably said that wrong. But Pucks a tiny feel. Early spring, daffodils are growing. Y'all, I can't wait to see. Y'all remember all the daffodils we um we put out that we, you know, we uh went and pulled up. The lady had them free pulled up 
and we replanted them along our whole fence line. And gosh, I can't remember how many feet that is, but I'm thinking it's around 1,400 to 1,800 foot, that front area there. And um, Jennifer, if you live near Phil, you know what I'm saying? You know, we may we may have to work something out if he's wrong. But along that front line there of our roadside or our road frontal property there, I don't know how many daffodils we planted, but we went a couple of times over there to get them. And y'all, y'all do not know how excited I am to see those daffodils come up. I'm hoping they're going to bloom. I really, I feel pretty confident they are. Uh, but I've never, I say I never, I did grow some daffodils at our old farm, but it was so much shade there that, um, they didn't do very well, to be honest. I had little spots of sun here and there and they would come up, but they wasn't really beautiful. It was just, they came up, they were there, they were there. Uh, so this year I'm totally excited, totally excited to see the daffodils up and blooming. Um, it's going to be beautiful. If, if they bloom, it's going to be beautiful. And I love the fact that they're all different, that it's going to be splotches of all white or the white and orange or the white and yellow, and then the yellow ones and then the all white ones. Um, really, really, really uh, excited about the daffodils coming up. But here's the thing. I don't really don't know much about daffodils. I'm, I meant to reach out to Jason over there at Petals from the Past. But I wonder if I should put any type of fertilizer on them when they come up. Or do you just let them go? I just don't know. I really don't know on that. That's something I'm just going to have to check out and see. Or I may ask Tracy over there at, um, at um, Just Dig It Farms um, about that. She's a, she's the garden guru um, to see if they um, see if I should do um any type of fertilizer do you guys know should i put any fertilizer when the daffodils pop up or should i just let them go i just don't know much about daffodils <clears throat> when do i when do i spray my fruit trees again according to jason at petals um i will spray my fruit trees in um on valentine's day with copper so we'll do a liquid copper on the fruit trees around valentine's day um, I'm seeing some feed after they're flowering. Okay, thanks, John. I've seen some people say that uh, potash or bone meal, y'all. <laughs> uh, so y'all already know the story. I know, but I had a, I got a, I got a, I got a story about bone meal. I don't use bone meal anymore. Um, do not fertilize. Thank y'all. Uh, Epsom salt. Okay, I'm getting all kinds of stuff. You're fertilizing the fall after they're done. Thank y'all. That's what I need to know. Um, bone meal. I planted a bed when we, this is, I don't think me and Brooke were married yet, but I planted a huge bed of daffodils and bulbs. And in each hole, I put a little, little handful or teaspoon or tablespoon of, um, of bone meal in each hole. Beautiful bed. And next morning, the neighbor's dog came over there and absolutely dug every single, and I'm talking, I probably planted 500 to 600. I don't know how many it was. It was a bunch. You know, when you can go at the big box store and you can buy like the bag of 100 or 200, you know, I bought like, I don't know how many bags of those daffodils I bought, but I bought, <clears throat> but that dog dug every single daffodil up. So from that point forward, I have, I have, so many dogs we got i have um i don't do bone meal anymore bone meal i blood meal will attract them too it really will uh, so i have to be kind of careful with blood meal i hadn't used blood meal in a while though we, uh, a few years ago at our old farm uh we caught some blood meal on sale i mean for pennies like 50 cents a bag or something and i bought every single bag they had and I would use it in the garden periodically. The thing about blood meal and bone meal is that they're very, 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 very slow. It's not instant. So 
the, um, of course, the blood meal is, is nitrogen. So if you want something quick, something instantaneous, um, you wouldn't use either one of those products. That's something that's just going to add to your soil over time. It's not a fast type fertilizer. It just takes a little while for that to, um, for that to work. But um, <clears throat> blood meal will attract them and other critters too. Other critters. Um, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if squirrels are attracted to bone meal. I don't know, <clears throat> but I am excited about that. Um, somebody wanted to know about the uh, the um, the pest the pest sprays I use for the garden. Uh, what I use for the garden is is three different ones, and they are well, it's four. I always say three, but it's really four because there's one I use every single week. But the four I use, my main one is neem oil. That's N-E-E-M, neem oil. I spray the garden with neem oil every week. And this is the spring and summer garden, not the fall garden. I don't have any pests in the fall. If I do, it's because it's temperatures like this and some, some may come in. But <clears throat> typically, I don't spray it all in the fall. That's when the fall garden is so awesome. But neem oil every week. And y'all pick pick a day. Pick the same day. Don't don't pick a day and then I'll get it this I, just say Tuesday. Tuesday is my spray day because what will happen is you'll forget. And you'll do it Wednesday one week, Saturday the next week, then you'll forget. Did I do it? Uh what was it we I can't remember. So pick a day. Pick a day. Tuesday. So say Tuesday's my spray day. So every Tuesday, we're going to spray. <clears throat> so neem oil is what I spray every week. Then I will do a rotation of BT. I don't know what that's, just B as in boy, T as in Thomas. That stands for something like trying to say the, the field's first name. BT and neem oil, that's what I'll spray. Then the next week, I will do... Spinosad and Nemo. The next week, I will do um, pyrethrin and Nemo. So that's what I do. So it's so Nemo. That's easy. You can find Nemo anywhere nowadays. So Nemo every week. <clears throat> BT, Spinosad, and pyrethrin. Now, Spinosad, if I had to pick one, it would be Spinosad. But here's the thing, y'all. If you're going to use any of these products, do one or two things, and that is spray early, early, early in the mornings. Or, yeah, I mix them all together. I'll put them all in my, all, I'll put a, the neem oil and whatever I'm using that week in my pump sprayer. Or spray late in the evenings because of your pollinators. Um, they're, they're, they're not out yet. Or... Or they're going to bed. So that's what that's so that's that's crucial. Plus, if you do spray in the broad daylight and it's sunshine and it could burn your plants, too. But that is the that is what I use every week on my garden. And that's all organic. That's all organic. Um, And it works because you got to start. That's why it's crucial that you do it one day a week, because the things with organic um, pest controls is that they um they do well when you don't have an infestation. Once you get an infestation, they're not going to work. They're just not going to work. Um, it, it's too late. So <clears throat> always remember that with organic pesticides, you got to stay on top of it because if it, if it gets too overloaded, they're just not strong enough to get to get rid of an infestation and you either have to do you have to make a decision at that point do you want to go non-organic or do you just want to pull it up and say um the heck with it so um that's what i use there for my um my uh my garden there uh i do get asked that a lot i've done a couple of videos on that over the years um you can go back there's one that's really really old that i go deep deep into so um <clears throat> I'll try to, and I think if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I also did a blog post about that. So if you ever want to know, you can go to our website 
And as Brooke would say, that's www.coghillfarm.com. And it um it's over there and it says blog. You have to look on the menu and it's blog. And I'm almost positive I put a blog post up there because that gets asked a lot. And that's just an easy way for you guys to go back and check without trying to write it all down during the um during a live stream. <laughs> <clears throat> do i have anything to keep ants and raccoons out of the garden honestly i don't have an issue with either one um i really don't i just um i, I don't know what to tell you and i've never heard of raccoons in the garden but i guess i guess they could go in there and eat your tomatoes if they wanted to uh or your fruits i bet i bet raccoons will like the fruits off the fruit trees our dogs do an amazing job. I had an email <clears throat> this week wanting to know about deer, keeping deer out of the garden. And our dogs do an amazing job, y'all, at keeping things like that out of our garden. We don't have a squirrel issue. We don't have a raccoon issue. We don't have a um, deer issue, really. So our dogs do, in my opinion, a great, great job, or our rabbits, um, of keeping all of that out. They really do. <clears throat> Um, but I've never had, now I've had squirrels in the past get in there, but I haven't had um, raccoons. Now, there is a fertilizer <clears throat> that pedals from the past sales, and I don't know the name of it. But this is, sounds crazy. Trust me, it sounds crazy. I wish Tracy was on here from Just Dig It Farm because she knows the name of it. But yeah, I'm sure you can Google it because... What I'm about to tell you is, is it's not going to be hard to find because <laughs> they take, <clears throat> and I'm not quite for sure where they get it from, but I, I'm thinking they get it from like a, 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 a water filtration place in a city somewhere, but they take human stuff now and they compost it and they claim that this will keep the deer out because of the uh, they don't like the smell of it. But I've also heard is it don't smell good at all. So I don't know. <laughs> is it worth is this is something that you won't want to put out if you're having a garden party? You know, do you, you would not want to put this out at a garden party? I've never used it before, but um I heard that it does not smell well, and the deer absolutely hate it. Now <clears throat> Jason's dad over there at Pedal from the Past, he does say that the Irish Spring soap or a high, or a strong soap does help to some degree. Um, I have used that before, but my issue with it is that um, it um <clears throat> it don't last. Uh, to me, it didn't. It 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 didn't last. Um, and so you'd have to constantly be on top of it all the time especially after rain it seemed like it really 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 did go away but um it, it didn't last but i'm not quite sure what the the human stuff human poo fertilizer is called but uh petals from the past does sell it but they said it does not smell good i'm i'm assuming it smells like a sewage center's all i'm I, that's the first thing i think of that it stinks but um jason's jason's dad who is a I mean, he is a, he was, he was the head of the fruit and agriculture center over there at Auburn, the, the university over there. And before that at Texas A&M. So he is a fruit tree guru. So if he says the soap work now, I'm sure it's not a hundred percent at all, but he says that the soap does work. And I have seen from time to time, some soaps over there at Petal. So I don't know. Um, I haven't had a deer issue here. I do worry about my fruit orchard because there's zero fencing around that. But um, and if you don't have the proper fencing, the deer will just laugh at you. That's why that if you noticed, and I know most of y'all did, but um, that's why that at our old farm, I had the flags around my garden over there. That's because we had a bad drought one year and I never had a deer issue ever ever had a deer issue but um <clears throat> we had a drought one year and the deer came in there and just ate everything 
in the garden. And uh, I had Seminole pumpkins planted, and they wouldn't eat the whole darn pumpkin. They'd go out there and hit it with their hoof and take one bite and go on to the next one. I don't know why. I just eat the one and just leave us some, but that didn't happen. So they were just hopping over my little four-foot fence like it was nothing. So I was just brainstorming, trying to figure out how to keep the deer out. And <clears throat> that's when I came up with the idea of putting that flagging up to give the uh, the illusion that our fence was seven foot high or six foot high or whatever it was, whatever it ended up being. Um, <clears throat> so that and it worked. It absolutely worked. I had zero zero issues with the deer at that point, and maybe the flags moving too also helped too. I'm sure that they didn't like that either. But that is why I put the flags up over there at the other farm, and it ended up. I thought it ended up looking pretty cool too, but uh, they did have a purpose over there. Um, <clears throat> for those that are just coming on, I've seen some questions. Uh, Brooks under the weather this morning; she's not feeling well, so I am trying to I'm, I'm trying to do this live by myself. <laughs> so, and we are live. We are live. <clears throat> I love. Tracy over there at Just Dig It Farm. I love her setup. She has a fence built, and the fence um, is cattle panels, and it's got four by four posts in it. But the four by four posts go up, and I think they're probably six foot tall or seven foot tall. And then she ran a two by four across it, and it's hung lights on the two by four. It is absolutely beautiful, and I'm really thinking about doing that in our backyard, over our backyard, well, it is our backyard, but in our backyard in the Potage Garden. I think that would be beautiful back there um, if um, if I think that will work, if that's something that uh, I, I just thought was cool. She sent me pictures of it. I'm trying to come up with uh, uh, fencing ideas for the back area back there, and um, that is one of them. That was one idea that I really liked. I loved her idea of what they did over there. It's beautiful. If y'all haven't seen it, y'all go over to Tracy over there. Just dig it for me. If you like gardening, if you're if you're a garden lover, y'all, she puts out the most educational, and her voice is so soothing, and it is it will put you in a trance. You'll be relaxed, and you will learn a ton. She is an amazing, amazing gardener, and that's Tracy over there. At Just dig it for him. Y'all be sure to check her out if you're if you're really, really a big garden lover. She's the one to help me design the fruit orchard. She's the one to help me design the, the parterre garden on the side. And she's also the one that uh, is helping us design our, our backyard potager garden back there. But um, <clears throat> she's awesome. She is awesome. Uh, update on the tractor. I think I want to call him this week. Uh, the last thing was... He is an older gentleman and he had neck surgery. And so he told me that it was going to, he was going to have to slow down a little bit. And it, he was hoping four weeks, but it may be six weeks. So maybe four to six weeks. Um, so I, I think I'm calling this week and check in with him and um, see how it's going. I did take him the starter. We took the rebuilt starter that really wasn't rebuilt over there because they said what nothing wrong with it. And he thinks something was wrong with it. And uh, <clears throat> so my gut told me to buy a new starter. So I did. I bought a new starter. It wasn't expensive at all. And I can always send it back if he didn't need it. So I bought a new starter. So it, that was the last update that I had with him. And so I'm going to check back with him. I'm probably going to check in with him this week and see how it's going with the, uh, with the tractor. But I didn't want to pressure him at all because I knew he'd had surgery and, um, you know, you know, just, just do what you can with it. But he had rebuilt the carburetor. <clears throat> he um had done some other stuff to it, but the starter was dragging and not engaging properly. And that was, that was, he had all that done. And then he was going to have his neck surgery. So then he had the neck surgery. So that's how, that's where we are now. Um, Green Daddy's doing well. Um, he's doing well. Um, about as well as uh, somebody over a hundred years old can do. I mean, that man is, he's something else. <laughs> he is something else. <laughs> oh, me. He is something else. 
Uh, is Peaches going to pick the Super Bowl? Yeah, she's going to. She, she, she pretty much does that every year. Y'all don't have to worry about that. Um, she's already been warming up for it. She, um, she told me she was leaning one way, but she wouldn't give me any clues. Peaches has actually been wrong twice on the Super Bowl. Um, and I think both times it's been the Eagles. She picked against the Eagles and the Eagles won. And then I think last year she picked the Eagles and the Eagles lost. So I think something I heard about the Eagles and um, the Eagles are not in it. So she'll probably get this one right. <laughs> I tell y'all something. This, this is this is funny. Y'all know this is a joke. This is this is a total joke. It's just total random chance. I print out the pictures. I put a piece of food under each picture, and and I got to um, I got I, I got to be quick when I do it. I mean it's it's like boom 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 because when Peaches is ready to go, I don't I don't I'm not gonna get multiple takes on this unless I do over several days and pick a good one. <laughs> but I really don't do that. Um, and I think that's what makes it even more funny because it's just it's just it's pure craziness. And that's what we are here. We're pretty much pure craziness here on the farm. So the way it goes is I print those pictures out and she can smell the treat. So I either I'll put a piece of fruit under each picture or whatever. And it just happens so fast. So a lot of times the picture that I sit down the fruit will, will be visible on one picture and not the other one or something like that. And y'all, y'all would not believe the, I don't want to say the word hate because it's really not the word hate, but you would not believe that the people that get upset because they think I rigged it. <laughs> that I think that they think that I was leaning one way or the other and I put and I, and, I, and I put a treat on one side and not the other or anything like that. So <laughs> every year, every year, I will get, if Peaches doesn't pick some fans, a uh, team as the winner, me and her, we'll get some, we will get some hate mail. <laughs> it is the funniest thing. Um, and I get it. I'm Y'all know I'm a big Alabama fan, and I get people get... <laughs> get carried away but it is y'all it is so funny and the funny thing is is say for instance especially because i know how passionate eagles fans are y'all that year that peaches picked against the eagles i mean and i and i'll post that video everywhere it won't just be on youtube or whatever it'll be every i'll post it on twitter and um everywhere so that video will be everywhere so it won't be just my our fans that see it. So it'll be people outside our loop here, outside our family that will see this video. And y'all, those Eagle fans, oh my gracious, boy, they wanted to make sure Peaches knew she was wrong with her pick. I mean, knew. Uh, it was it was absolutely hilarious i mean i i got so tickled at those people that got so caught up in my pet pig picking against their team that um it was it was pretty pretty darn funny now a lot of people were tongue-in-cheek and were playing along with it and were having fun with it but there were some serious fans out there <laughs> that took it that took it serious <laughs> Oh I man, it's so funny. It is so funny. Um, it is, it is, it is, it is. But it, I just it blows my mind, especially when when I mess up and the paper don't sit down right. You can see a strawberry on one side and not the other. And whoo. <laughs> so one day this week, I think it was day for yesterday, I wanted to do a test run. On Facebook. As you guys know, Facebook completely stopped paying us for our videos. Even though they're running ads on it, that means that they're making money on it. They were not paying us. They're supposed to pay you a percentage of what it is. And it's not it's it's not like it was a trillion dollars, but it's still the fact that they were doing this wrong. Um, and so I 
you know, anyways, long story short, we stopped posting on Facebook because somebody was getting that money and they weren't sharing it like they were supposed to, which was, which was dead wrong. Multi-billion dollar outfit couldn't, couldn't share like they're supposed to. So it's been a minute. I don't know how long it's been since I've posted a um, video on Facebook, but I did post a long form video on Facebook and I'm going to, I'm going to test the waters to see how it goes. It'll be a little bit, it'll be probably a week before I see if they start sharing any ad revenue with us like they're supposed to. Um, but we'll see it. Uh, it is an older video. I don't, didn't want to put a newer video on there, but, uh, it is an older video. So for the Facebook fans out there, I'm going, I'm going to test the waters maybe a week or two and see how it goes. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I, did, I, I saw a lot of y'all saying that, that, um, that, uh, hey, you posted a video. I've already seen this video or something like that. But there was a lot of people that were happy that I did post one on there because I get it. Not everybody likes YouTube. Um, not everybody likes Facebook. Not everybody likes the other platform. Y'all like your own certain platform. So, um, uh, so I didn't want to confuse anybody, but I did want to say that I am running, running some test runs on there. Uh, but it's, it's crazy, y'all. Our live streams are disabled on our main page for no reason. Absolutely no reason. There's no rhyme or reason. I can, I can look, uh, I can send them a message and I just get a generic response back. It's all, it's all allocated out. It's nobody in the United States that's answering me. So that's why the live streams are now on Brooks' Facebook page, not our main page. I try to share it on the main page so those you guys can watch it. But um, but anyways, it's crazy. I can't do lives on the main page, but I can do lives on Brooks. Um, they decline Brooks videos, long form videos for us posting there for some reason. Never they never give you any reason why. They just said you know you just you doesn't it won't work. It's not gonna work. You just can't do it. So. Anyways, um, I'm going to try it again, see what happens. If it doesn't work, then we'll just continue like we are doing. But I have noticed that um, Facebook has been really, if, if I share the YouTube link on Facebook, which they actually do not like because they are competitors. They are. It's like Coke and Pepsi. Um, they do not like, um, they do not like sharing external links so i noticed the one i shared yesterday was really bad i think it's one of the worst ones yet um so uh it is what it is i'm sorry for the facebook fans but we're going to try and see um we're going to try and see hopefully hopefully it works out hopefully it works out out there um is, is peaches a swifty y'all peaches is a southern uh, uh, not Southern. She's a classic country music. That's what she likes. She likes Loretta Lynn. Um, she likes she likes some some uh, the older Roseanne Cash. Um, she's a big Dolly fan. Um, but you know I, she she don't she don't dislike Taylor Swift at all. But um, she's um she she likes that old that old country classic music. Um, Hank Williams Senior. She likes that. Um, she likes George Jones, you know, she, she will listen to some Keith Wheatley from time to time, loves Patsy Cline, that's, that's Peaches. <laughs> oh my gracious. <clears throat> Did I see the UFO? That, that wasn't a UFO, that was a, that was a bird. Um, I, I had several people send me that, that was a. That was a buzzard flying over my head there um, in that video. We got, I say buzzard. I will get in big trouble for saying buzzard. Um, we looked it up. I had to come up with a reason because down here in Alabama, it's like one of those things that happens a lot. You know, like I say, I cut off the water. You know, we talked about this in the, in the last live stream, but that is buzzards. We call them all buzzers down here and and michael keith's probably gonna think i'm crazy too but everybody in alabama calls them buzzards buzzards but my bird guru mary carl they're not buzzards 
they're either a turkey vulture or a black vulture. They're not buzzards. <laughs> um, she says that buzzard lives in Europe. I think that's right. And it and it doesn't even it's not even in the same family as a vulture. So I was like, my Mary called they had to come up with the word buzzard from somewhere. And somewhere in I don't know, in the early, 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 early days was um they called them turkey buzzards, but I still can't remember where the word or if they ever said where the word buzzard come from. But they called them turkey buzzards. And then, of course, over the years, they dropped the word turkey, which left the word buzzard. And that's why we called them buzzard. Um, so it was, um, it is, uh, they're all buzzards. We still, I even still call them buzzards all the time. Um, but I, I can't say it around Mary Carl. I'll get in, I'll get in big trouble. <laughs> I really won't. I really won't get in big trouble. She thinks it's funny, but uh, she'll say, no, no, daddy. That's what she said. No, daddy. Those are not buzzards. You know, those are actually, and she'll tell me which one it is. They all look the same to me, but she'll say that a, a turkey vulture has, you know, something on its head that it's white or something on its head. And that's how she can tell the difference between the black vulture and a turkey vulture. But we have we have we have them around here uh, a lot because they roost right over here, right across the street over here from us. They like to roost in the area over there, <clears throat> and so we see them flying. You'll see them all the time above us. A lot of people mistake them for hawks, and we do have hawks here. But um, we, you'll just see them flying over. Um, luckily we don't see them. You know when they found something around in here. Um, but, um, it, um, they, they, they do fly back and forth and a lot of times it's single ones. Thank goodness. Cause that means something's not passed away over here, but, um, that's why you see them all the time. You'll see them all the time in our airways up here. And, uh, I do get, I'll get messages. There was a hawk in your video. There was a hawk in your video and, um, it's always the vultures. You see flying over. <laughs> I think of vultures. I think of them big things over there in um, Africa or something. That's what I always think about a vulture. I don't ever think of a of a, what we got here. We've always always called a buzzard my entire life until my daughter started correcting me many years ago. This this hadn't been recent. <laughs> <clears throat> We do have, we do, knock on wood, we haven't had any issues. I say that. Y'all, matter of fact, it was last year. I told Brooke that last year was when Mary Carl had the pet pigeon named Mel or Melly, and she would take it outside to free flight. She would let it go fly and then come back, and the hawk got it. So, honestly, that is really the only issue that um we've had with hawks around here thank goodness knock on wood uh, we haven't had a, a a chicken or anything even out there where we got them now uh we hadn't had a chicken uh be taken by a hawk or anything like that and at our other farm we had hawk issues all the time especially in the fall that's when they like to come in the fall and winter because their food supply is um short because i'm sure they love it. they're loving they're living off mice and squirrels or whatnot and so they're um <clears throat> the, the the chickens are fair game and at our other place we had issues we had really really bad issues at our other farm and i think it was because all the trees um we you know we do have a lot of trees here but where we got the animals around in the pastures and i i think it makes it a little more difficult for them to um to stalk you know what i mean so they're not sitting in a tree watching something they have to actually just be flying over and not that they can't do that but um i do think that helps with our hawk issue around here is that we got our animals in those pastures and and they also can go up under the coop and all that but um and plus cheese i think cheese does it a tremendous job at um keeping aerial predators at bay and then the electric netting 
keeps the um the land predators at bay. So we really don't have any issues, knock on wood, with um any predators, honestly. We really, 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 really don't. Thank goodness, though. Thank goodness. Mm. <clears throat> what is my favorite farm chore? Wow. You know, it, I don't even think about them. I really don't. I really don't. There's there's nothing that I go, oh, my gracious, I really can't stand doing that. I really don't want to do that or anything like that. Um, feeding animals is, is a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. The days I don't record, I know y'all see me in the videos that, um, I'm, I'm talking to the, uh, to the animals and I really do talk to the animals that way. That, <laughs> that is, that is exactly what happens here. It really does. So, I do enjoy feeding them because, I mean, I really, really, I really do. Um, I, 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 that's exactly what happens. There's, there's no put on or <laughs> there's, there's no faking that at all. That is exactly what happens to me all the time. Um, I probably talk to Holly the most because she's around me all day. Um, you know, I talk to her like, like, like she's a person a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, Brooks, she's totally used to it. Um, I talk to myself too. Brooks, totally used to it. Um, but she always says, if somebody ever walks up, <laughs> it doesn't know who you are, they're definitely gonna think you lost it. Um, but uh, I do, <laughs> I do, I do actually do talk to animals, so I do enjoy going out there and feeding animals, um, conversating with them. I do think some of them at least act like they know that I'm talking directly to them. Um, uh, some of them do not listen very well. Uh, they do. I won't say all of them do know their names, but um, you'll be surprised. Moody 100% knows his name. 100% knows his name. I don't think Joe and Mo do, but Moody knows his name 1,000%. I think Mildred, I don't say I think, Mildred knows her name 100%. Peaches, without a doubt, knows her name. Uh, I don't know if Gus and Loretta do. I think because they're together. Uh, I don't think they know they're, they might. They think they may. I don't know. It's hard for me to tell with those guys. Peaches, without a doubt, knows her name. I think Tipper and Topper probably know their names. Um, the Nubians, though, may, maybe the Nubians are not as smart as the Nigerian drawers. Maybe that's what it is. Um, but definitely, definitely, Cheese, without a doubt, knows his name. I know that's that sounds crazy, but Cheese knows his name 100%. I can say his name, and he will turn his head and look at me and start the honking without a doubt. Um, well, <laughs> I feel really, you're right. You're right. Misty Dawn is 100% correct. Loretta absolutely does not know her name because Loretta is deaf. <laughs> You're absolutely right on that one. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I think Jessie does know her name too. I believe she does. I believe she does. Um, but the ones that the ones that really, really, really um crack me up is moody and cheese without a doubt because moody can be on the back side of that pasture over there which is a good long ways and i can say his name and he is turning his head instantly uh he is now you know i wonder if he'll do that with anybody else or if it's just me and brooke um and mainly me brooke brooke really doesn't have too much interaction with moody because Moody is intimidating. He really, 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 really is. He is. If you haven't seen him in person, he's, you know, what they say on a lot of times on cameras that, that on camera or on TV or whatever, it makes you look taller. Sometimes it says it makes you look, you know, bigger too. 
um, but makes you look taller. It does the opposite from Moody. It makes him look smaller. Um, he is he is a big boy. It never it never fails. Every single time somebody new has never seen Moody in person, has only seen him on camera, but sees him in person, they are just in total disbelief how big he is. He is a very, 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 very big steer. And he's not through growing because Moo over there, and I'm a survivor, he's a good, if I'm not mistaken, five, six inches taller than Moody. The last time I measured, and I haven't measured Moody um, in a while because Moody is getting bigger and bigger. Y'all saw the picture I did, the side by side, and I kind of, I should have did it the opposite way. I put the, I put the now picture first and the before picture second. I should have done it, but I think you guys figured it out. <laughs> but Moody, he gets excited, and because of his size, you have to be really, really careful. And he, and he, he does this. He, he slings his head. He really does. And he'll sling that head around, and he gets excited, and he runs and gallops. And <clears throat> if um if you're any bit nervous or scared, um it will it it, it, it is scary. It really is. And so Brooke lets me handle Moody 99% of the time, and um <clears throat> I don't have any I don't have any issues with him. I don't. If um I can just throw my hands up. And tell him to get back or whatever, and he listens to me. Um, he'll just step back and do all his head slinging for the way. But he, um, he is, he can be scary. He can be scary. Um, Nugget, does Nugget know his name? I don't think so. I really don't. Y'all, speaking of, that just made, that just reminded me. I watched something the other day, and it was a bird trainer. She's a bird trainer, and I was shocked about one of them. But uh, it was a bird trainer, and, and, and um, she said that the two, and I hate to use the word dumbest, but that's what she used. Um, I think that's what she used. Anyways, the two birds that are the least trainable, that sounds better, the least trainable, because they can't, I mean, they're, they're all smart in their own right. Number one was an emu, and I can see that. I really can. I, I, emus are, they're very independent, as you guys can see now with Goldie and Nugget, very independent. Um, and um, and I think they're like that in the wild, too. I'm on, uh, I know they are. I've read about them. They are nomadic. I think that's, I think that's a word. If it isn't, it is today. Um, <clears throat> but they do get together, um, I guess during mate season or whatever, but when they're not, they kind of, they kind of, Stay away from each other. But emus are very independent. So emus are number one. But number two, I thought this was kind of, uh, this one shocked me, is an owl. You know, you always think of owls being wise, the wise old owl. I don't know how they got that reputation. But she said owls are very, very, very are hard to train versus, um, you know, eagles and, and, um, Hawks and other type of falcons. I don't know if a, if a um if a owl is considered a falcon or not, but owls are not very trainable. So go figure. I don't know, but um Nugget is um I don't think Nugget knows his name. I I don't. He um he knows though as soon as he sees us that he will um he will come right to you. And um, Goldie's gotten way better. Goldie's gotten way better. And have I looked for an egg yet? Yeah, we've been looking. She stays in a little area in one spot more than other areas. And um, I go over there, I don't know, a couple of times a week and make sure and uh, and see if um, see if she's laid an egg. I haven't seen anything yet, though. I really hadn't. It, uh if she has laid an egg, y'all, I, I I do not think it's fertile at all. Cause they they don't get along. They just don't get along. They don't. It's not like that. They're you know 
fighting and fussing all the time. They just really don't care for each other, honestly. They don't. They really do not care for each other, Nugget and Goldie, whatsoever. They, they, they're they never together. Nugget's walking around the pond. She's walking around in the tree area. Um, I don't know. They just, they just don't. And I think that's just how emus are. I really do. Luckily though, it could have went, it could have went the other way. Um, she could have been angry or aggressive or anything like that. Cause the females can't get that way, especially this time of year, I believe, cause this is their mating season year. Um, but so far y'all, she is, she is perfectly fine. And I get, I get asked a question too is, is how do I tell them apart? Uh, she's a little bit smaller than Nugget, and she's got a little more, she's got some more darker features from her head to like her middle of her neck area right there. And she, she's a little bit darker than he is. Now, if they're side by side, it's way easier to tell them apart for me because I'm around them every day. But when they're off walking, sometimes it's tough except right now because like i said it is i think it's pretty much mating season y'all she is strutting and it is y'all saw it in the last video i mean she is putting on a show out there walking i'm talking about her chest is up and her neck it, it's almost just like this right here i mean it's almost like the letter s and she and her legs are just just i mean just so perfect she is just bam Bam. And you can see her just look around from time to time. Like she knows she's got it. I mean, just boom. Bam. But I don't, I don't think, you know, Nugget, he don't, he don't care. He don't care. If I was an emu, I'd be like, because I mean, y'all, she is, she is, she is working it hard. But Nugget don't care. He really don't care at all. <laughs> he don't care at all. <laughs> But it absolutely reminds me of a model on a runway. It does. I mean, she's just, just, it is so elegant and perfect. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful the way she's out there walking. It is. And the pace of it, that's what gets me. It is, it is the perfect, she is, she is, she's trying to be seductive. I can tell. I mean, it is the perfect just it's not too fast and it's not it's not too slow it's just just right just boom bam boom i mean it's perfect absolutely perfect i mean she is strutting it hard hard now I, you know now that i think about it, i've never seen um lester um show his female ostriches and he may have i wonder if they do that i wonder if they i know that the male I know Carl and the other one, they, they throw down. They put on a, I'm talking about throw down dancing. Absolutely throw down. Male emus don't, they don't, they don't have that. They really don't. I haven't seen, I've never seen a male emu imitate or act like that whatsoever, even though they're very, very, very closely related. Um, But uh, I hadn't seen Carl. I mean, I hadn't seen the female emus do that. I wonder if they do that. I have to ask Lester that if they if they if they strut around like that, or if it's just the opposite. Because since Nugget don't dance, I wonder if it's just the male that does all the all the dancing, or if the female all the females dance too. Okay, they don't. I wonder if they strut though. I mean, maybe that's I don't know something about that strut. I mean, it is. She's getting it. She is working it hard, hard. Whoo, Goldie is a lady. She is. She is. The female ostriches dance. Do they dance just like Carl does, or do they do something completely different? That's what I. That's what I'm wondering. Because Carl, I mean, he does that thing where he gets in that one spot and looks like he's doing the wave, and then he goes shimmies on down. Do, do, do they do that too? That's what I'm wondering. If it's just like because Carl's is. Carl's put, I mean, he, he looks, whoo, he does. I mean, it is something else. <clears throat> so,
So it is very similar. It is very similar. Just like, okay. Okay. Well, I was wondering. So they, the, the dances are very similar. Well, Nugget don't strut like Goldie. I can tell you guys that. He does not strut at all. At all. Uh, I don't know how often the female emu lays an egg. I wouldn't think it'd be every day because of the sheer size of that egg. I really don't. I may be wrong on that, but I'm thinking they only lay a few eggs. That's it. A few eggs. What brand of our, our, our nesting boxes? Don't get me to line, y'all. Brooke bought that nesting box. And honestly, I, can, I think it... I think it's called either the better nesting box or the best nesting box. I think that's right, y'all. Um, y'all, look that up. I, I think that's, for some reason, I think that's what it is. Um, I think that's what they're called. The best nesting box or the better nesting box. But I saw another brand out there that's been hitting social media hard. Um, but I, I don't know the name of it at all. But um, that was the name of ours. Uh, cool thing about that one, it's got that little perch on it that um that the guy with the cows, the guys and gals could roost on at night, and then of course they're gonna do their thing. They're gonna do number two all on your nesting box. But it's got a little thing that's uh that you can get extra that goes on the nesting box, and it, it threw me off because I thought it actually physically lifted up the perch. Now, if somebody made that, that would be great. Because you have to remember to go outside and do this. But it's a magnet that has a timer on it. And you, you have to set it up yourself. And so that wooden perch to try to keep the guys from and gals from doing number two on the nesting box. You go you stick it up there and it's got a timer on it. So you, you have to, the best nest box, that's it. Thanks, Kimmy. Um, so you, you put it up there and... What happens is, is you set it to go off in so many hours. So say, this is one of the things you'd have to remember to go out there at a certain time or, or either let it fall down after four hours or five hours because they'd all be roosting somewhere else. But what it does is, is after a certain time that you punch in there, the magnet releases and it, and it comes down. Only bad thing is, is you have to remember to go out there, which... We don't. We really don't. We were so excited when we got it because I thought it lifted it up and dropped it on its own, but it don't. But that nesting box is 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 nice. It really is. Um, it is it is totally eliminated. The uh, what's cool about it is not only does it roll out. What's cool about it is that it has no separation in it. So what that means is that they all can't get into one area. I don't know if you know how nesting boxes are. You'll have 10 or so many girls try to get in one area. And um, it, it, they'll sit on top of each other. Or they all lay in one, or all try to lay in one nesting box. So this one eliminates that. And there's no, there's no separation in them, which is really, really awesome. And I saw somebody ask, why is um why 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 is it always red? <sighs> I read that somewhere and I can't remember the exact reason, but they did a something about they did a study about the colors, and there's something about the color red, y'all. And I don't know if it calms the chicken or if it attracts the chicken to them. I, ca I can't remember. I can't remember exactly, but there is a reason why red is used. Um, but I can't remember what it was. It's something about the color red. Either it calms them or it attracts them. I believe is what it is. Um, but that there is, there is a reason why it's always red. Believe it or not. <clears throat> Uh, it's, somebody said that one egg every two days until they have a clutch for the emus. Thank you. Appreciate that. Jesse is a female donkey. That, and um, she was given to us by Daniel and DJ over at Arms Family. And 
the reason is is that Jesse cannot have any babies. Um, y'all know Jesse had a, a rough go when she was born. They didn't think she was going to make it. And so, therefore, because of her medical history, they don't want her to have any babies. And so that's why she came here. So Jesse will never have a intact male friend if we were if we were ever to get another donkey. Um, it would have to be a fixed donkey. I'm sure that's called something. Um, or we have to get another female donkey. We couldn't have, we couldn't, Jesse can't have babies. She just can't. Um, they're too scared that it, um, something may happen to her if she were to have babies. So no babies for Jesse at all. Um, gosh, I was fixing to say something. Ain't that something? Just like Brooks here. <laughs> <sighs> oh me <clears throat> have i ever milked a cow i have not ever milked a cow only thing i ever milked is a goat um that's it never milked a cow and um and i don't know if we'd ever if we've had people asked it about mildred having babies i don't know y'all it always worries me it does and i know and i know it probably shouldn't but it does when you know, I've, I've seen Dr. Pohl, got it right that time, with these cattle farmers, and he has to be called in because the baby's stuck or it's coming out the wrong way or something, and that just worries the stew out of me. It just does. Um, even though even though I know my buddy Nick over there at Chestnut Hills, he knows how to pull them. But um, that just worries me that something would happen, and especially Mildred, such a small cow. She really is a small, small cow. Mildred is a meat cow. That's, that's what she is bred for. Um, of course, we're never going to eat her, but that's what Mildred is. She's a Charlay Hereford. I am thinking I'm saying this right. An Angus mix. And she was orphaned. And that's why the cattle farmer, the, the big cow farmer didn't want her is that she was orphaned. I can't remember if her mother passed away or her mother rejected her, one of the two. And they didn't want to bottle feed her. They didn't want to have the time. They didn't want to spend the time bottle feeding her. And I think that's why she's so small, is that um, is that she just had a lot of stress and just wasn't raised on her mama's milk. And, you know, she was bottle fed by, by Miss Christine, our dear friend who got her, who actually the cattle farmer said it over her fence and so that's where christine found her but um she she was a bottle baby and that's one reason that mildred is so tame she's so 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 tame just like a bottle baby goat if you bottle feed a goat they are so tame and that's why topper's so sweet that's why he's so sweet he was a bottle baby bootsy was a bottle baby um tip was a bottle baby Mo, I think Mo, no, Mo wasn't a bottle baby. Joe's a bottle baby, believe it or not. Big stinky Joe. He's a bottle baby. Um, but that's why, like, Bo Peep is not a bottle baby. And that's why she's so skittish. She's um, we got her, she was older when we got her, anyways, but bottle bottle babies tend to be very, very tame. And that's why Mildred is so extremely tame. But um, that's uh that's that's one reason that I really, really, really I've always been scared to uh to uh to 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 breed me. Plus I don't have nothing to breed her with. I don't it couldn't be moody, thank goodness. Plus she she would have to be bred with something the same size as she is. We couldn't couldn't have, you know, some type of complications at all because of her size. So I doubt we'd ever breed her. I really, 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 really do. I really doubt we'd ever breed her. Unless I you know, I wouldn't say never because, you know, anything can happen and we may find her a perfect maid or something. Who knows? But we would um don't plan on breeding her. I can tell you that at all. <clears throat> well, y'all, I have actually been longer than me and Brooke. Ain't that something? And I made it through and I hope I did a fairly decent job with you guys. <laughs> Oh me! I almost, I almost I, 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 my first initial thought was, is I'm not going to do this. Um, I don't know how I can just just ramble on by myself, but I did it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
I hope y'all have a fabulous, fabulous Saturday. And y'all, I hope to catch y'all on the next one. I hope Brooke's feeling better, uh, good enough to do the one on uh, Tuesday. We'll see you Tuesday. And as always, y'all be good. And thank y'all for hanging out with me today by myself.